Hi everybody, I'm Mike Azier and welcome to my March 2006 video commentary. As promised, this month we're going to be talking about asset-backed securities. Now the last two months we spent talking about mortgage-backed securities. First, just the plain old mortgage-backed pools and then last month we talked about the kinds of things you can make out of the mortgage-backed pools like CMOs. But what I promised was as we were going forward we'd move into other structured products. This month, asset-backed securities. Now, before I go anywhere else, the first thing I want to define is what is and what is not an asset-backed security. And when I started doing a seminar on this topic, God, I don't even want to remember, 13, 14 years ago, I created a seminar which I titled, actually, Asset-Backed Securities, which encompassed everything, mortgage, asset-backed, and immediately one of my clients corrected me and said, Mike, you call the class Asset-Backed Securities, but the truth of the matter is you talk mostly about mortgage-backed securities. What's with that? And what I didn't appreciate is where I come from, which is the sell side. Remember that. Wall Street divides up two ways. The sell side is where I come from. Those are the brokers who create the product which gets bought by investors, as opposed to where many of you work, which is the buy side, the investors who actually make the investment decisions. What I didn't appreciate was where I came from, which is the, you know, the sell side, anything, any fixed income security which was backed up by some sort of collateral, we would refer to as asset-backed. What I didn't know was, on your side, many of you anyway, on the buy side, you had a very specific breakpoint to be mortgage-backed securities. What you require was it to be single-family, first mortgages. That's mortgage-backed. Single-family properties and first mortgages. That's mortgage-backed. Asset-backed securities is literally anything other than that, which sometimes people then want to give me a quiz. Well, you know, what, what do you mean? How about home equity lines of credit, which you might hear the acronym HELOC? Asset-backed. Second mortgages on, on single-family homes, asset-backed. How about commercial mortgage-backed securities, Mike? Asset-backed. Commercial mortgages, car loans, credit card receivables, student loans, leases, on and on and on. Anything other than single family first mortgages, asset backed. And I know some of you watching this are, are, aren't even sure what I'm trying to say to you. You know, I, what do you mean? I, I don't even know what you mean here, Mike. Now, in the last two months, I talked about taking people's mortgages on their house packaging them up into securities and selling them off to investors. What I'm suggesting now is selling other kinds of loans, car loans, leases, student loans, credit card bills, packaging them up and selling them into some sort of, you know, whatever kind of security, which is going to wear that asset-backed label. The issue immediately becomes, and in the brief period of time that I have to spend with you talking to you on this video, I want to get to the heart of the matter. A lot of the things I suggest, there's not even any actual collateral involved. At least with a mortgage, there's somebody's house. At least with a mortgage, somebody put 20% down or took out private mortgage insurance. What if I have a Discover Card bill or a MasterCard or Visa bill? How do I package that up and make you, as a potential investor, feel comfortable. And the last people I feel like jumping to the defense of here are going to be the credit card companies. But traditionally, historically, the default rate on, you know, big name credit cards, MasterCard, Visa, Discover, American Express, usually runs 3 to 5%. More recently, it's been up to 4 to 6%. But here's the thing. Discover card takes a bunch of their credit card receivables, packages them up into a security, you know, with uh, Wilmington Trust, Bank of New York, one of the big trustees, custodians you could imagine. 
Now, of course, if you buy this asset-backed security, number one, the people whose credit card bills are, are pledged the, to the security is your first line of defense. But the thing is, people, you know, the immediate worry is, what about defaults? Well, that is where the big interest rate that credit card companies charge you come in. If you buy that asset-backed security, let's say it's, you know, March of 2006, I might have to pay you 6 or 7%, which isn't great, but it's decent. Now, remember, the credit card holders are the ones getting charged 14, 15, 18 percent interest. Six or seven percent is going to the investor who bought the asset back security. Another couple of percent is going to administer collecting the payments, all that work that goes into servicing the collection of the payments. The reason credit card interest rates still are so high is if the default rate runs in that four to six percent range, I have to, if I'm Discover Card, have to collect those extra percentage points to basically set up a fund where if you're the investor that bought the asset backed security, that is where I'm going to generate the funds necessary to cover defaults if they run at that rate. Now there's multiple ways we can structure asset backed securities. We can set up senior and subordinated classes where the senior class is protected from defaults. The subordinated class bears much of the default risk. But whatever the issue, if there's default risk, last month when we talked about mortgage-backed products, all we had to worry about was prepayment risk. But the minute you have default risk, we have to find a structure that protects you, the investor, from that default risk. And whatever the product, CMO, CBO, CDO, CLO, or what I want to talk specifically this month about, these asset-backed securities, I have to find a way to protect you and also prove to the credit rating agencies, Moody's and S&P, that somehow I've structured this security so that the investors are protected. The fact of the matter is, most asset-backed securities have very high ratings, provide decent returns to investors, and it all comes through this structuring and credit enhancement process, which is what we're talking about. But anyway, spring has taken too long to get here. I'm glad it's sort of springing right now, but next month I hope to bring you some of these video clips from more interesting locales than the one over my shoulder. Once again, I hope you're well. Life's treating you good. I'll see you back here next month. Thank you.